Hello and welcome to Bud's RPG Review, where I give my thoughts on role-playing games, card games and board games. Today's review is the Immersive Battle Maps Volume 1 Fantasy by Yarrow Studios. Ok, first a bit of history. Originally kickstarted in 2019 with over 15,000 backers, the Yarrow Studios Immersive Battle Maps Volume 1 has sold over 40,000 copies and contains 32 hand-drawn maps that have been designed to create an immersive environment that's filled with hazards, treasures and secrets. They have a lay flat binding, a water resistant and wet and dry arrays. Yarrow Studios also sells static cling sticker packs of various styles that you can use to add features to a map. The book is a bit of a unit in size and weighs in at a pretty hefty 2.5 kilograms and is 28 centimetres wide, 43.5 centimetres long and 3 centimetres deep. I had to raise my camera rig in order to fit the whole thing in shot. To the cover. Here we have a nice piece of art, of who I assume is Atlas Mundi, the purported creator of the maps. I couldn't find the credit for the artist, or maybe I missed it, but either way it's perfectly adequate. Ok, let's take a look inside to see what you get. Firstly there's an inscription by Atlas Mundi, and then after the table of contents we move on to the maps themselves. The first double map spread is one of a castle battlement, replete with some large siege catapults and a decent sized piece of ground in front of it. This one is called Siege of the Castle Wall. This is followed by a set of docks with what looks like a partially damaged vessel and an undamaged one. The sea looks stormy which could explain it. This is called Winderwall Boat Docks. We then have a small hedge maze which is partially lit called the Hedges of Lauren Elise. There's an inn replete with tables, chairs and torches. The Greasy Minx Pub. And this is followed by a farm with a stream running through it. It's called Oldbrook Farm. The next one is called Winderwall Promenade and has a statue of a horse rider and a market. We then have quite an impressive display called the Calgary Dwarf and Forge, which has lava flows and weapons scattered about. After this we have the Magistrate's Mansion, which I have to say has particularly impressive carpets. And this is followed by some training barracks. We then have the Blood and Sand Arena, which is a bit small for me. And we have what is called the Undisclosed Rooftop Location, which would probably be particularly handy for those playing Blades in the Dark or the like. There is the Undiscovered Icelands, which is part glacier and part ice flows. And we then have the Queen Mary at sea, which I imagine has space on this side for sea monsters. And after this we have a sea location that appears is just for general use and isn't named. We have Graveyard of the Condemned, which is replete with gravestones, a crypt and quite a creepy looking tree. We then have another inn, the Board Booger. And this is followed by one simply called Campgrounds, which has a quite impressive waterfall. Next is the Queen Mary Marooned, which shows the boat named throughout wrecked upon a beach replete with palm trees and the sea lapping on the shore. This is followed by the Rhinestone Caverns. And after that is the Windowall Undercity, a fairly handy sewer system. We then have Zipingo's Tower, a wizard or sorcerer's abode, which is set up to be over multiple levels due to the presence of spiral staircases. Following this is the Temple of Moradin, quite nice if grey. Next we have the Winterwall Farmer's Market, which appears to be at dusk or at night time for some reason. After this we have the Fashion District, though for the life of me I can't understand why it's called this. And then we have the Alchemist's Librarium, replete with flying books. This is followed by the Spooky House, which is a bit lacking and grey for my taste. And then we have one called Shipwreck, which feels less top down and more tilted towards the reader. After this is the Bandit Camp, which I think is a little bit small but nicely done. There's the Windowall Prison, which has bloodstained torture chamber and skeletons chained to the walls. And this is followed by the Lava Field, which feels oddly specific with the sigil etched on the floor. Lastly, we have a particularly handy open field. And this is followed by a blank dungeon floor.
pretty much since I began gaming, a method of representing battles has always been a requirement. Whether that be floor tiles, a roll of plastic wrap with grids printed on the back sheet, or even just a big piece of paper. Things have certainly moved on over the years. The Yarrow Immersive battle maps have many positives. They're of a good build quality, dry and wet wipeable, and are supported by the company that makes them, which is always a positive. Some of the maps are just a bit too niche to include in your game, and I do feel that they could be somewhat crowbarred into place in order for the person who bought them to squeeze some use out of them. I found the plain maps to be the ones I would find the most useful. Dungeon floors, grass, etc. And I think the book should have had more of those. Also, some way to detach them so that they could be used in conjunction with each other would have been nice, as I don't feel that these would be useful in a large battle. They seem that they would be most handy to demonstrate a skirmish. Also, if somebody decided to write a campaign which used all of the maps in the series, then they would be excellent, but some of them are just that bit too niche. The lava flow, for example, has a giant sigil on the floor, and telling your players to just ignore that, it's not there, goes a long way to breaking the immersion on something that advertises itself as immersive. Another issue is the sheer bulk of the maps. They're pretty huge and heavy, and I can't imagine many people having a burning desire to carry them to face-to-face -face games, especially if that involves public transport. The art on them is decent if a bit simple, which I imagine is by design, but the issue I have is determining how useful someone would find them in the long run, which is why a book of featureless common places such as deserts, forests and the like are much handier than pre-designed and named places. And as such, it's difficult to recommend them to everyone, though I imagine there are many out there who would find them incredibly useful. I give the Yarrow Immersive Battle Maps a 6.5 out of 10. If you enjoyed this review, please make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Also, if you're interested in buying this product, I'll put some links below, and if you use my affiliate link, you get a decent 20% off. Lastly, if you like what I produce here, then maybe think about supporting me on Patreon, or even becoming a member of my YouTube channel. But out.